Let us look to the Lord and pray. Father, we pray. As we begin to meditate, Lord God, how to strengthen our faith in you. So that, Lord God, we can able to earn back our inheritance which we have lost all these years. Father, we pray, Lord God, as we begin to recap your word, pray that you speak to us, Lord. We pray your Holy Spirit, our teacher, will speak into our hearts, Lord. Pray that incline our hearts and our ears towards you. We pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, last week we saw a recap. Three things you ought to know before you pray. All right? Simply nutshell. The three things are you ought to pray in confidence because of your standing. You're standing as a child of God. Secondly, we see God hears our prayer. All right? Our God is a God who is not high up in the sky or hidden in some way. Or He's a God who's nearer to us and He can hear our call when we call upon Him. And the third one we saw, God cares for us. All right? He really cares for us that we cast all of anxiety upon Him for He cares for us. This morning I'm going to recap again on why prayer. Why do we need to pray? What is the reason for us to pray? Why, why do we call to pray? Every now and then you will say, you see in the churches, individual, and they say, pray, pray, pray. Okay, we ask to pray, and you ask to pray, we pray, we all together, we pray. Why? There are reasons why. To strengthen our faith in the Lord. All right? We have seen the word of God. And the second thing is that prayer. So there are five points that I raised, and I just want to bring it the point to you. What are the five points? The first point that I brought to you, prayer is important. All right? Prayer is important. Now, prayer is important because God's word has instructed us to pray. This is it. All right? Now, we all follow the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is found in the word of God. And so here we are. We have the word of God given to us. So that we need to be instructed by the word of God to pray. Now in Luke chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18. We look at verse 1. Simple as it is said. And he was telling them a parable to know that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. At all times. To pray and not to lose heart. This is the very teaching of Jesus in the, in the gospel. That. The word of God have instructed us to pray. Now why is it pray? Now God wants every child of God to come to him. And he wants to hear from his children. Simple as that. He wants to hear from his children. Alright. What we can say in a synonymous saying that he wants to hear from the horse's mouth. Alright. We need to pray unless you pray. Alright. God hears. Now many a times I've noticed, Pastor pray for me, Pastor pray for me, you can say that. Yeah, Pastor pray for you, but do you pray? I was told of an incident, alright, that this particular woman went to a pastor and said, Pastor pray for me, I'm having a problem in my work, and can you please uh, fast and pray for me? Alright, and the poor pastor began to fast and pray, but that woman was having a feasting time. Alright, because Pastor pray for me, Pastor is fasting for me, alright, can we see? How do you expect God to answer your prayer? Friends, you are in it. And you ought to pray. Alright, and you are the one who is going through the issues. You need to pray. In, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, Paul says this. Devote yourself to prayer. Now the word devout, alright, and the one who follows to believe, you become a devotee. Alright, so you are a devotee to prayer. Alright, that means the word devotee comes from a Greek word called proskaterio. Which means to be diligent, constantly, to persevere, all right, and to be regular and earnest in a thing. That's what the meaning says. All right, that means you are ought to spend time with God in prayer. And God wants to hear from His children. All right, God wants to hear from children, only then you can find strength. We see Peter's life, all right, if you can turn to the 13th chapter, sorry, first chapter of, of Acts, you find Peter who once betrayed Jesus and now he is praying and you will notice by his prayer he got three things he got strength he got boldness he got courage 
that he can openly can speak about Christ now. At one time, he was ashamed of Christ. All right, when Jesus was caught in the courtyard, three people came and said, I saw you too. And he said, no, you never saw me with this man at all. He denied him outright three times. And now we see the same Peter is boldly, courageously, and he speaks the word of God publicly to the people in Gentiles and to the Jews. How? Peter, if you notice in book Acts of chapter 1, he began to pray. He devoted himself to pray. He spent time in prayer. Friends, if you need courage, if you need boldness, if you need strength, then the only way is not by drinking essence of chicken or taking some tonics. All right, if you want that strength, is prayer. All right, it's not about theology, it's more about neology. How much of time we spend in our knees to pray? How much of time that we spend in time in speaking to our God? The Lord desires us to pray, my friend. If only all the churches of the very late, they see the urgency to pray. But all this while our churches have been on a, on a comfort zone. All right, if you notice, churches are having seminars on worship, Seminars in floating in the spirit, seminars how to become rich, and seminars on how to grow, or all these kinds of seminars, but none we have ever heard, and seminar on prayer, where we need to pray for our nation. If only churches from the beginning would have prayed for our nation, our nation would not be in this state today, in a deplorable state today. We have failed. We have been so inward looking. When we are looking within our church, as so we want to see within our church and be contented with our church, we were not interested to see outside what we are doing. We need to see how the Lord says when in His first sermon, now, I am set here to set the captive free. Set the downtrodden free. All right, and that's what the first sermon of Jesus, He spoke to us. So friends, that we are here, our duty now is to pray. And God wants to hear from you because you are his child. So you don't expect someone in proxy to pray for you. If you want things to be changed, every now and then I hear pastor pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Why you don't have power? Why you don't have power to pray is it? You know, we have all these things in our mind that I don't have power to pray. Uh, when I pray, God doesn't listen. Only when pastor pray for me, listen. Turn to 1 Corinthians. One Corinthians chapter one. Underscore this verse, my friend. In chapter one of one Corinthians, underscore verse twenty-four. It says here, but to those who are called both Jews and the Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, what does it mean? It tells us here: the minute you accept Christ as your personal savior. The minute you come into the Lord, the minute you acknowledge Him as Savior in, in your life, two wonderful things are given to you. You are given the wisdom of God. You are not an immature person. The wisdom of God is given to you, not the wisdom of this world. All right, as James chapter 4 tells us, the wisdom of this world is demonic, it's natural. But the wisdom that comes from above is peace, gentle. Right, and he talks about you know having been understandable, no hypocrisy at all, and that's the wisdom God is giving to us. Now, that's number one. Number two, it's been given to us the power of God. Look at the word, my friend, and the word here is dunamis, is the Greek word called power of God. Now, you say you don't have power, you have the power of God in you, you have the wisdom of God in you. And this is what we don't have to seek every now and then when preachers come, we come and give our head to become water. Am I right? Where is your prayer? Where is your time in prayer? We need Nehemiah's, my friend. We need Ezra's. We need Esther's. All right, we need these people in prayer. We see them, how they move mountain. Nehemiah prayed. He built the wall within 52 days and he completed something is impossible feat. Esther prayed. 
there was a persecution against the Jew by one particular man called Haman. And what God did, he got hanged. We saw how Ezra brought the people out or from Persia to the promised land. By what? By prayer. And so this thing you want to see success in your life. Your prayer is important in your life. Alright, so make sure you do not leave your home without prayer. So let me tell you my friend, Ian Bound says, prayer is not a duty bound. It's not a duty bound. All right, it's not because, you know, I'm a Christian already, la, I need to read, read, la, and for the sake, you know, to be satisfied, I pray, la. That's not it. It's a privilege, a relationship that you have with God to pray. A relationship that you have, a communication with God, you can talk to God, and God wants to hear from you. And God wants to hear the problem from your mouth, my friend. Do you really pray? Do we spend time in prayer? And so the first thing is that, Prayer is important and has been directed in the Word of God. The second point that I raised, prayer draws us closer to God. Right? Prayer draws us close to God. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. What does it say? Romans 12. Chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the will of God, that is, which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Three things. Huh? As you draw closer to God, all right, as you draw closer to God, you notice you are no more conformed to the pattern of this world, but you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right, by renewal of your mind, what does he say? All right, renewal of your mind means you'll be renewed in mind in Christ. All right, that means you will be able to see things of the holiness of God. All right, and you will follow the things that the word of God tells us. All right, the scripture tells us, Sabbath is made for men, not men for Sabbath. All right, Jesus says, Sabbath was made for men, not men for Sabbath. Now, what does it mean? On the seventh day or Sunday, all right, the day that is the day once in a blue moon, God understands. But if it's every Sunday you have to work on a Sunday, then that's not the job that you have to sit. The devil has deceitfully taken you from the, the corporate worship. All right, once in a blue moon, because of your nature of your work, God understands. But if it's going to be every Sunday, then it's something that you need to think about. All right, do you have the favor of God then? All right. And if it's a business meeting, then you have to do a wait on a Sunday. All right. If it's a business meeting, it could be any kind of business that you're doing. You can postpone it to a Sunday afternoon and God will honor you. All right. You know why? As you draw closer to God, God will be pleasing to you. Three things are stated here, my friend, in verse 2. Three things. One, it tells about it will be good. Number two, it will be pleasing. And number three, it will be perfect. Now, what does the three mean? Number one, it will be good. It means goodness of God will be upon you. All right, in everything that you do, all right, it be God's favor be upon you and goodness will follow you. All right, because you are transformed in your mind. Secondly, it tells you are pleasing. You are pleasing before God and before men. You find the favor of God upon you. When you begin to pray and get closer to God, all right, you are pleasing God. And the third thing it tells you, my friend, perfect will of God. You will never go wrong in whatever decision. Why is it that we have made a lot of false decisions and we cry about? Oh, we, we made a lot of decisions through our flesh and we regret. But here the word says here, it will be acceptable and perfect. It will be perfect means you will able to discern the will of God. That's what the word says. All right, look at verse 2. So that you may prove what is the will of God. You know what is the will of God. Some of you desire to get married, but still in the desert. Am I right? Why? Don't blame all others. Blame yourself. 
All right. If you have gone and engaged yourself in prayer and get closer to God, you will know the perfect will of God in your life. You will know what you're doing. God will direct you what you want to do. Including joy, peace, happiness, success in whatever you want to do. God will give you that. All right. You have to draw closer to God. And the day that you begin to draw closer to God, you can see God moving into you, my friend. And we see how, if we only we can able to draw ourselves close to God, we are coming into direct communication and relationship with God. All right? We begin to worship God. We confess our sins. We wait upon Him. We listen to Him. How many of us have really, really sat quietly and says, Lord, speak. How many of you have done that? How many of you have heard the voice of God? Yes, we have all the pattern. Now read the Bible. Immediately cry. Close, we go. But how many of you have come and taken the Lord? Here I am. I'm struggling. Speak. David did it. Saul did it. Paul did it. Peter did it. Why can't you? Why can't we do it? Have you ever gone before the Lord in total silence and says, Lord, I don't want to talk today. I talk too much. You talk, Lord. You tell me, what am I supposed to do? You will definitely hear the voice of God, my friend. When you're sincere, when you're honest, and you're truthful, all right, and you go before with the burden of God, you can see how God moves. And you can see how God speaks within your heart. So friends, prayer draws you closer to God. Your mind will be changed. You'll be thinking of things of above, not of things of this earth. All right? You will think differently. You will think very differently. In the Bible study, I was sharing about one particular lady, a Chinese lady, who was sent to a Chinese school. All right? And this Chinese school medium is more Cantonese, and she was a Hokkien. And she was pushed into the school, and it is right in KL. And you know, teachers cannot get transferred out of, of, of you know, uh, uh, people want to come into KL and so on, but they don't want to go up because it's very, very hot area, this area. So what happened? She was so much disturbed in the board meeting. The headmaster speaks in Cantonese and she doesn't next to nuts about it. People ridiculed her. People laughed at her. What is it that you do not know? You are a Chinese and you do not know Cantonese. All these things. And you know, in, and she was a fine Christian. And she put this mode into it. Rather than whining and groaning and complaining and talking about transfer, this is what a renewed mind will do. You know what she did? After two years in the school struggling, she began to learn Cantonese. Can you see that? She began to learn Cantonese. The renewed mind taught her, my dear child, if you want to be in this school, Right, learn Cantonese, and today she has mastered the Cantonese, and today she is a senior assistant in Jamwa School. She's a Christian. Can you see how we groan and mourn and complain? I have no drive to go to work, la. All right, I have no cheese to go to work, la. And all this speaks about your faith. You have failed. You have not prayed. You have not drawn closer to God to hear the voice of God and say. God will stand you. Why don't you learn the Cantonese language? And she did within eight months. And she fits in very well. In a Christian mouth, there should be no complaints and groans and moan about the way you work because God has placed you there. Mind you that. If you are working in a home, God has placed you there. If God has placed you in an office, He's placed you there. If God has placed you in a business, He's placed you there. All right, and that's where your ministry is, my friend. How many of us realize that? If you have drawn closer to God, God has spoken to you. He have told you, my son, my daughter, this is where you have to begin the ministry. As you work, as you give yourself, your testimony is enough. You don't have to go and preach. You don't have to go and give tracts. By your very own action, my friend, by your own character, people will see the beauty of Christ in you. Paul says what? Galatians 2 20, I no longer believe, but Christ who lives in me. And that's it. So when you draw closer, your mind changes. You have a renewed mind. And you will tell all your business associates, not on a Sunday morning business uh, meeting. It will be a Sunday afternoon. And you will be honored for that. Alright? If you honor the Lord, the Lord will honor you. 
Samuel. Okay, so that's the second point that I raised to you. All right, that you need to come closer to God. Now the third point, prayer is powerful. My friend, you think you're praying in the air? All right, do you think you're praying, all right, just in the air that no one listened to? Well, let me tell you this today. Get it into your head right now and listen carefully. God not only hears your prayer, but he's also acting on them. All right? God not only simply hears your prayer, he acts on them. But right? there are three things that, huh? which you must be prepared to receive it. It isn't like a traffic light. What is on top of the, the traffic light? Hello? That's your now pop your license or not? Amber? Oh my goodness, I think who is the Amber said, you have pop your license now? All right? Yeah, license Trabang, I think so. The top one is what? Red. Red, yes. And the middle is Amber and the green is in the bottom. All right? So please laugh. I, I don't know what you are driving. You are a dangerous driver on the road. Let me tell you this. If the ember is on the top, something wrong with you. You might be car color by. Alright? Okay. There are three things about prayer, my friend. When you pray, definitely God answers you by three modes. One, great. That means no. Let's understand that. Alright? God says no. This is not one for you. I got better for you. All right, and the second one, Ember, not now. Wait, I got my timing for this. But we are all the quicky, quicky ones, and we want immediate results. God says, wait. And the third one, of course, the Lord says, yes, I give you right now, you'll get it. Okay, this is the three mode, my friend. But let me tell you this, God not only hears, he acts on your prayer. Remember that, he's acting on your prayer, my friend. When Abraham went to God, when God decided to destroy Zodom and Gomorrah, okay, God says, it's enough, I hear of these people. Enough, I'm going to destroy them. Abraham went and stood before the Lord, and he stood in the gap and says, Lord, you've got 50 righteous people here who you want to destroy. And the Lord says, for the 50 righteous people, I would not destroy both Zodom and Gomorrah. Then he says, Lord, can I employ you a little more? He says, what? If you find 45 people, all right, would you destroy uh, these people? You can find this in Genesis chapter 18. And then the Lord says, on the count of 45 righteous, I will not destroy. Then there's a Lord, please allow me to speak again. If you find 40 people, righteous people in Zodom and Gomorrah, would you destroy? The Lord says, no, on the 40 on the count, I will not destroy. The Lord, please do not get angry with me. If you find 30 people, would you mind, would you destroy it? The Lord says, no, I will not. On the account of 30. And he says, Lord, please don't agree with me. Lord, if got 20 people, would you destroy it? And the Lord says patiently, no, I will not destroy the 20. Then he says, Lord, please don't get angry with me and curse me. If there is 10 people, would you destroy it? On the account of 10, I will not, the Lord said. Then he pushed a little further and said, the five people can <laughs> And the Lord said, I will not destroy Zodom and Gomorrah on the account of five people. And the Lord changed his mind. Okay, the word of God tells us very clearly, the Lord changed his mind. Exodus chapter 32, verses 11 to 14, if you notice, God was burning in anger when Aaron went down there, he made a molded calf, and all were having worshipping the God because Moses had gone up to Mount Sinai and that's it. We do not know what happened to him for 40 days and 40 nights. Make us a God. Make us a God. Alright, so what Aaron did? Couldn't handle the pressure. So he said, okay, all of you sons and daughters, take out your earrings. Alright, now I just con I just said, huh? sons and daughters, you can read that in the book. You know where the origination of rings, earrings when men were in, huh? Slavery! Of course, you may wear one is gay, huh? All right, any man who wears earring is a sign of slavery. You won't be blessed, let me tell you this. Because it was in Egypt when the Israelites were staying, the features of the Israelites and the Egyptians are the same. 
They look the same. They had the same height. So when Pharaoh took them into custody as, as, as a slave, to say the difference between Egyptian and the Israelite, wear a earring. So all men are supposed to wear a earring, or the Israelite. And that earring was tagged along while they were coming through the wilderness. And so what happened as they came into the wilderness, when they all cried out for, for a God, Aaron said, take out all your earrings out. Men, sons and daughters, take out all your earrings and throw into the fire. And came out of molded. All right? Now, that's not a story. Now, what happened here? God was burning in anger. God was burning in anger when Moses came down. And he saw, and the Lord says, I'm going to destroy these people right now. It's enough I had of them. I brought them out from Egypt. I gave them the ten you know, miracles and I brought them. And I cloud them with the clouds over their head. Daytime on the hot desert. In the nighttime I get fire to keep them warm in the desert. And I did all this. Look at them, they're worshipping something different. I'm going to destroy them. It was burned in anger. That's what you see. Moses went before the Lord and stood in the camp and said, Lord, if you destroy these people, the Egyptians will laugh and say, you brought the people of your people to destroy them in the desert. Lord, would you please? And he prayed. Friends, you look at verse 14. The scripture says very clearly, the Lord changed his mind. Me. The Lord changed his mind. Friend, your prayer is that powerful that can change the mind of God. Do you know that? God can change. You can change the mind of God by prayer. So the prayer that you're praying, my friend, it is not just going into the thin air. The Lord is hearing and the Lord is listening and he's acting on it. Abraham Lincoln, he was struggling with the blacks. All right, slavery. And we all know Abraham Lincoln is a Christian and he believed in the Lord. All right, and every morning he used to pray, his secretary would come and say, who is on the earth beats me early and sees the president? All right, and, and he can't enter whenever the president is engaged with someone. All right, and so what happened? Every morning he comes back, the secretary, he will hear Abraham Lincoln talking. And so he went day in and day out, and he wouldn't come earlier than that, and he noticed he still talked to someone. And he got one day very impatient. He said, this time I have to walk into the Oval Office and find out what is your talking. Who is the person who beats me in and sees the president? And he opens the door. You know what Abraham Lincoln is doing? He opened the window and he was talking to God. All right, he was a man of prayer. And you notice, it was that prayer that he prayed. All right? He prayed for the whole night. That's what the, the historical, historical document says. He prayed for the whole night because the next morning the Congress, like a parliament there, the Congress is going to decide on the blacks. And do you know what he fought for? He achieved it. The blacks were set free. They were no longer slaves. You know why? One man's prayer. Listen, one man's prayer, my friend. You can pray. You can pray right into your life. All right? Let me tell you that you can pray right into your children's life. You can pray right into your work life. You can pray right into your personal life. You can pray right in the place where you are working. You can pray right now for your bosses, my friend. Your prayers are not goes in the thin air. Remember, prayer is powerful. Jesus looked at the fig tree and says, you will no longer have fig, and that fig died immediately. All right? That prayer is that powerful, my friend. We need to understand that prayer is so powerful. All right? And he turned, Paul, all right, he turned around and told this Elemas. All right, what Elemas was saying, you know, they were trying to create problem for them. And he turned around and said, you are such a deceitful fellow, sinful fellow. All right, you will be blind. On the spot, Elimas became blind. By a mere word, by a mere man. Friend, your prayer is power packed. Let me tell you this. It may not come today. It will come to pass some days. All right. But you need to be specific. You need to pray specifically. You need to seek the Lord specifically. 
All right, now with all this thing I'm doing, you must be right with God. Okay, let me tell you that you must be right with God. And only then you will see God working. Now the fourth point. The fourth point is prayer brings you peace. Prayer brings you peace. Now many of us in our wit's end, all right? In our wit's end, and tells us that we all are turning into anxieties. All right? And our anxieties, we are turning, becoming anxiety, we're anxious of everything about the food that you eat, what I'm going to eat tomorrow, would I have money for tomorrow, or would I have enough for this, you know, enough for that, all the anxieties that we have. Do you know, my, my friend, we Christians should not tolerate anxiety, should not tolerate worrisome. And if you do so, all right, it will affect your soul, it affects your spirit, it affects your physical being. Anxiety causes sin, a sickness into your body, my friend. Let me tell you, the lethargicness, la, tiredness, la, all right. All these things because why? You've been filled with anxiety. And the scripture tells us very clearly. All right, let's turn to the Philippians chapter 4. All right, we just read the scripture. I want you to read that one again. Chapter 4. Underscore this verse. Huh? Just one line it took over here. Okay? Look at verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 tells us what? Be anxious for all things. Am I right? For nothing. Ah, what is the scripture then? Be anxious for everything. Am I right? No. Huh? You also not too sure. Do you have your word of God with you or not? Yes. Anxious for nothing. Now this is what. If you are a Bible believing Christian. Okay. If you are say I'm a Christian. Shame on you if you did not bring your Bible to church. Simple as that. The word of God is your weapon. La. And you can bring your big handbag. Sorry. Yeah. But you can't bring your Bible. Huh? Sad isn't it? That shows what kind of faith we have. That shows what kind of our, our lives towards the Lord that I want to learn from the word of God. Alright. Friends, when you come to church, whether you bring your handbag or not, bring the Bible. Yes yeah, or not? You know, today, huh? as you come all the way, oh, yeah, I forgot my mobile phone. What do we do? 360 degree turn. Am I right? But you forget the Bible? Never mind. Ashiras will be Bible. Ashiras, but four Bibles in the church will give. La. What a shame. Uh, by, uh, mobile phone can go back to the train. Can come to church late. Uh, Bible, never mind that church. All the churches that I served, yeah, let me tell you this. You know, those churches I had, they all have the human books and the Bible in the pew. Uh, I told them to take up all the Bible. Because people will come with their you know, hands free. If you have your own Bible, the, one of the points I said, God will speak to you and through the word. You can underscore it, go back, learn, and you can see how God speaks to you and God gives you peace in your life, my friend. Alright? Anxiety be filled with it. Anxious for nothing, the Bible says. In everything give thanks to the Lord. Are you willing to give thanks to the Lord? I have a brother who has got a lawsuit over hundred thousand dollars over him. They have sued him over. And you know something? You know something? He could have been drawn, hugged looking, and come and say, Pastor, you know, I've been got a lawsuit over my head. I don't know what to do. No. He has a peace of the Lord and says, Lord, I know. I have my God. I have been praying about it to the Lord. I've submitted it to him already. I have nothing to worry. Word that. I have nothing to worry. No doubt, 100,000 ringing over his head. Plus, there's all the legal charges over him. But he says, I've committed it to the Lord. Are you able to say that? Because prayer brings you peace. And that prayer brings you peace that will not have anxiety over you. And when you have anxiety over you, sickness over your soul, your spirit, 
and your physical being. My friend, this is something that's very practical in our life. All right, when your spirit is heavy, your soul is heavy, your spirit is heavy, what happens? You fall sick. And that is the reason Jesus said something very accurately here. Yeah? Let's turn to Mark, uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, all right? Now, when you have a problem, how we are, all right? Look at verse, okay, let's, verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, all right? Now the, the Lord says here, come to me, all those who are weary, you know, we are weary, you know, you know, we have that looking lie, you know, are you, are you, it's over my head, I don't know what to do, everything you talk about negative only, right, the next thing you talk about, we are heavy laden in our spirit, now what the Lord is saying here, look at the verse very carefully, at verse 29, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and will give you rest for your, for what? Your soul, not your heart, not your body. Your soul is affected, my friend, because worried, anxiety, and the Lord hits the nail on the coffin box and says, I will give you rest to your soul. Bring it to me. Your battle is mine, says the Lord. Okay? So, friends, coming before the Lord, you know, your mind can be mind-boggling. You know, sometimes you always think about how am I going to, to, to resolve this issue? Or, uh, you know, how am I going to you come in mental block? In a mental block, you leave it to the Lord. The Lord will open a door. All right, if you go to Ipo, there's a restaurant called Number One. He was indebted for one million dollars. All right, one million dollars, you know, he has to pay. And he prayed to God and says, Lord, I'm a pauper, I don't have this money. Went into a business venture with another person. They're in the catering business. All right. And then finally what happened? Things gone over it. The other man sued over him. Partnership huh? sued over him. One million dollars. Amazingly, God spoke and brought. And this brother, who is now currently in evangelism in Ipoh, all right, and he said, right, I will commit this matter to the Lord and I will not worry because the word says so. The word says so. Why should I worry? I have the almighty God. I have a God who created the earth. I am his son. And I have told him. And the Lord just brought about within six months. All right. All the debtors came and sat with him and said, brother, you do this, do this. And within six months, one million dollars was solved. Son was written as back then. And he started his restaurant and he called it number one restaurant. And that number one is Jesus. Alright. Friend, pray with peace. You may be hurdled with a lot of issues right now in your life. You could have hurdled with a lot of issues in your life right now and you do not know where to turn to. If you are one of them, pray and commit it to the Lord, and the Lord will give you that peace. If you are sincerely, honestly, turn to the Lord and give Him and having no anxiety at all, then you are in a better position. Okay? You are in a better position. And the final point. Alright? Prayer protects us. Alright? Final point is, when you begin to pray, prayer protects you. You know why? The Almighty God is on your side. Remember that. When you pray, you are not alone, my friend. You have been protected. You've got an almighty God on your side. That's why you worry. All right? You have an almighty God. Whatever that you're going through, you have the Lord with you. Now, a classical example you will read in Daniel chapter 3. The Babylonian king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, all right, what he did, he created a big God in the plain called Dura. And at one point of a time, when the trumpet will blow, everybody had to stand up and bow down. But there were three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, no, we worship our living God. We will only bow down to our Yahweh. And so what happened? When they were blown, 
these three men all were buying down, but the three men were standing. The Jews got upset. They went and complained to the king. And the king summoned them and says, listen, I'll give you an opportunity because I know you men. All right, if you, I'll be blow the thing, you bow down, you're set free. And so they blew it. The three men stood and the king was furious. The king was so furious that you defied me. All right, and so what happened? The king ordered to throw these three men into the furnace of fire. And the scripture tells us in verse 16 to 17 that throw him the fire to make it seven times higher in the furnace. Seven times higher. It, the, the commenters are saying, yeah, even those three people who are, were carried up to be thrown, the men who carried them also will be burned. That much of heat it generates. And the king ordered that three men, Abednego, Shed, Medrach, and Shed, Meshach, and Abednego, and Shadrach, tie them. Because you put them in the fire, they'll run away. So tie them. So they tied them, and seven times they increased the finance of the fire. What happened? What happened? They prayed to God. God, we are praying to a living God. Lord, we know you will protect us. It was your simple prayer. The three men who said, what happened? Fire was burning. They were not scorched at all. The king came and looked and was shocked. You know what? The very king who worshipped all the paganistic God and said, your God that you worship is the true God. All right? Despite me putting the seven times of penance, you have been protected. Means your God is greater than mine. That was the very word. Do you know God protects you? You know, we are talking about pickpockets, snatch thieves. All right? This is where the Bible said you come like you learn all this. How to get the authority? You have the rights in you. Do you know that? As a believer, you have rights. What are your rights? Today, as a Malaysian, you have your rights. Am I right? Likewise, as a Christian, you have your rights. What are your rights? You can pray, my friend. I am going from this point to that point. Take me safely. Do you pray that? Whenever you sit on your vehicle, when you hold your steering, do you pray? Do you ask God to, to help you? Do you pray, Lord, I want to go safely to my point? You know, sometimes we take for granted our God. Do you know that? The minute I sit in the car, I start my car, my God will be with me. Sorry, my friend, you need to pray. You ask God, God, take me and the Lord will take you. All right. And you can find how God saves you, my friend, how God takes you. All right. As I told you last week, if a cobra snake comes into your house, what we do? The first thing. All right. Have you ever don't know if you just read from the book of 1 Corinthians 1 24, you have the power of God. You can tell the snake in the name of Jesus, you get out of my house. You have no right to be. You will go stand and go off. All right. You have the rights. If you see a dog coming at you, what do you do? Run. Am I right? Run faster. The dog is coming up to me. Can't you stand straight in the name of Jesus? I've done that. Huh? It comes with a sudden break. What this fellow is saying, something new, I can't even go near him. Am I right? We understand, my friend. In the name of Jesus, when you pray, I've told you about this incident in Singapore. This girl came back, the 11 o'clock shift, she came back to her lift. Two young Chinese men followed her into the lift and they wanted to rape her. One man held on to the button that would not stop in the 16th floor, right? All right. And the other one wanted to. This girl knelt down, call upon the name of Jesus. She stays on the 14th floor. All right. The lift went up and the 14th floor door opened. She walked out. She walked out. She called upon the name of Jesus. These two Chinese men were stunned. And next day, when she came back from the same ship, one Chinese guy was there. All right, there's a true story, yeah, happened in 1982. All right, and he said, sister, sorry, I will not touch you, but I want to say something to you. When we came yesterday with a bad intention, we saw a person beside you. And I want to know that person. And that girl says, that was Jesus was beside me. And do you know that couple, they are married now together? Yeah. What I'm trying to say, even in the point of hopelessness, in the point that you think there's no hope, you can pray. 
God is our protector, my friend. Amen. The way God protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that very God is the one that you are worshipping, and He can protect you. And that is our God. My friend, what you are learning this morning, it's not a fictitious, it's a practicality. If we put to use, you will see how great is our God in our life. We can sing all the song, how great He is. But you want to taste and see. You must experience it. But first of all, let me finish up with this. Make sure your life is right. Your life is right with righteousness and holiness. And in the area that you need to forgive someone, some people are living on denial. Alright? I have nothing to forgive. That is the biggest liar that we are. And that's the reason you're going down the drain rather than coming up. Alright? If you have a bitterness, pray for it. Address it. If you are hurts, pray for it. Come out clean. Alright? Then you can see how God is a God and when you begin to pray. Alright? You will see prayer is so important. Prayer draws closest to God. God prays powerful. And the prayer brings peace as well as it protects you. Next week, I will continue in prayer. Alright, maybe we're talking about supplication. Why then our prayers are not heard? Why is the reason my prayers are not heard? I've been doing everything right, my obligations right, all this thing, but yet my prayers are not heard. Why? We will see that next week. Let us all turn to the Lord in prayer.